Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be looking at an optimization to our parallel Gaussian elimination with MPI, where we apply a cyclic mapping of our data. So in the last video, we looked at an initial implementation of parallel Gaussian elimination with our message passing interface. Now, one of the things that we mentioned near the end of that video was that we had some workload imbalance, and that was based on how we distributed the rows of our matrix to our different processes or ranks. So with what we were doing in our baseline version, we were distributing um, large chunks of rows right to each of our different matrices. Now, this unfortunately meant that um, you know, our later ranks were doing more work than our earlier ranks. So recall right, the number of elimination steps that um, we have to do for each row. For the first row, we do zero elimination steps. For the second row, we do one, and then two, and then three as we go further and further down the matrix. So that means that we do more rounds of elimination for the uh, later rows in our matrix than we do for the earlier rows. And in fact, with how we distributed our data right in these large chunks, um, our earlier processes would actually completely finish their work. And so by the time we got down to the last few rows in our matrix, we only had a single process actually doing any work. So our code was effectively serial at that point. So what we're going to be looking at today is how we can better balance this across our different processes. And we're going to do that with a cyclic mapping of our data. So instead of assigning large chunks of rows to each process, we're instead going to round rob and distribute our rows, right? And this goes back to you know, something we even talked about in the first video in this series when we talked about this workload distribution. So let's go ahead and start off by doing a bit of refresher on what our, MP, our baseline MPI version of Gaussian elimination looks like. So that's going to be our baseline today rather than our serial implementation. So we'll go ahead and go up to the top of this file here. Um, in our setup code, right, it's the exact same as last time. Um, we're going to be evenly dividing, you know, in rows right, across each of our processes. So each process is going to get in rows of the matrix. We're going to have three buffers that we're working with here. Right, our rank zero will have the full matrix, right? And that will also store a result. Then each process will get a chunk of the matrix, so a chunk of contiguous rows here in this M chunk. And then whoever's responsible for doing the pivot calculation, right, for the pivot row, um, they'll have to send that pivot row to the other processes here. So we'll have a buffer for one row of the matrix. Then, right, our rank zero will do the initialization of our matrix. And then before we actually get into our computation, we have to scatter our matrix to our different process, uh, processes so that each process has their chunk. So in this case, right, we're scattering in rows of the matrix to our different processes here. So in rows of MPI floats coming from our source matrix going into the chunk, uh, right, buffer for each of our other processes, right, including the one that's sending. Okay, so that's gonna be the basics of how we distribute our data here. Then of course we have you know, our actual code that implements Gaussian elimination. So what we do is we check to see if this row belongs to us. If the row belongs to us, we do the pivot calculation, send out that pivot to our other uh, ranks or processes, and then we do the elimination for our local rows. If that pivot um, doesn't belong to us, right, then we still have work to do, we just receive the pivot row and do our local eliminations for our matrix chunk. Then finally, after we've done all of that work, we collect up our results. So that's kind of our baseline here, right? That's, that's how we implemented Gaussian elimination last time. So let's go ahead and see how we can you know, fix this problem dealing with a workload imbalance. So specifically here, uh, this workload imbalance is coming from the fact that we're distributing large contiguous chunks of these rows, right, to our different processes, right? We're doing in rows at a time uh, to each of our uh, processes. So let's go ahead and see how we can uh, make this a bit more balanced with a cyclic mapping or a round robin distribution of our um, matrix rows. So we'll go ahead and open up the cyclic striped.cpp and a lot of our code is going to stay exactly the same. So you know, we're still gonna use the three main buffers for communication here, right? Task zero will do our initialization. And in fact, each of our processes or ranks is going to get in rows of the matrix. They're just not going to be contiguous rows of the matrix this time. So really our major change comes here, right? In how we distribute our rows of the matrix. So here, instead of scattering in rows of the matrix at once, what we're going to be doing is scattering one row of the matrix at a time. So rank zero will get row zero, rank one will get row one, and so on and so forth, right? And when we run out of ranks, we'll just repeat the process. So for example, if we had say eight processes, 
um, running or eight ranks. Um, rank zero would get rows 0, 8, 16, 24, and so on. Uh, row one would, or rank one would get rows 1, 9, 17, and so on and so forth. So what we've essentially done is made sure that right, each rank is getting rows from different parts of the matrix, right? So it'll hopefully be more balanced. Okay, so after that, right? So after we do this for loop where we scatter one row at a matrix at a time to our different processes, so each process is still going to have in rows of the matrix, but now it's going to come from um, all over the matrix rather than just one contiguous chunk of rows. Um, we're gonna go through our loop, right? Where we go through every single row inside of our chunk and who that row belongs to, so which rank it belongs to. Then if that row belongs to us, it'll do the pivot calculation, and then it will go ahead and broadcast that result to everyone. So here, right, because we no longer have a situation where our earlier rows are going to drop off, uh, or rather our earlier ranks are going to drop off very quickly when they finish their work, we'll just use this collective communication routine, this MPI broadcast, to send this pivot row to everyone here. So we'll just do this MPI broadcast to send dim elements of inflows of our matrix to all of our other processes. Then what we're going to do is just do the elimination for our local uh, rank, right? Uh, for our, or rather for our local rows inside of our chunk. Then, right, um, if, you know, this pivot was not assigned to us, we do roughly the same thing as we did in our last example. We receive a our pivot row, right, from this MPI broadcast, right, that our other rank is sending. And then what we do is just our normal kind of elimination down here. Right, so that's gonna be the basis behind this new cyclic striped version. It's really the same code underneath the hood, a couple different index calculations, um, right, as compared to our other version where we had contiguous rows, but most of our code is actually exactly the same, right? And the core idea behind these two different chunks, right, whether you know this row is assigned to us or it's not, right, all of that you know, kind of ideas remain exactly the same. Right, the one final difference here that we have is going to be with our gather, right? So just like we did a scatter inside of a for loop, we're also going to do a gather inside of a for loop, right? Because we're no longer gathering large chunks of our matrix, um, right, from our different processes. Um, those chunks, right, are striped, right? Um, they're not contiguous rows. So we have to collect them kind of one at a time, right, with these gathers. So here we're going to gather dim elements from our chunk, right? So we're going to gather one row of our chunk in each iteration of this loop and put it into our matrix, right? To get our result here. And all of that is going to go into rank zero here, right? Rank zero has this full matrix that we're collecting results into. Okay, so that's gonna be our cyclic striped version. Um, we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did last time in terms of you know printing out our matrix first to make sure that you know we're getting the right result and do a bit of a sanity check right that we correctly implemented the cyclic striped mapping and then after that uh, what we're going to do is take a look at performance right and we're even going to print out um, the wall clock time from start to end right um, for doing gaussian elimination so let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's start by compiling both of these programs so we'll do mpi c++ on our cyclic striped and also for our baseline, both compiled with O3 optimizations. We'll give ourselves a little bit of space, so we'll, we'll move over this window. And then we'll go ahead and start by doing MPI run, right? And here, maybe we'll just start with running four processes for our, yeah, our zero baseline first. So there we get our results here. So it did it pretty quick. It tells us the number of seconds, and then it prints out our simple uh, 16 by 16 matrix, right, that we're solving for first. And then we'll also run our cyclic striped version. And what we see right first now, just sanity checking our overall um, uh, our overall numerics here, making sure we got the right results, our matrices look identical here. So if we just spot check a couple values, you see we have this 7.7811, exact same number here. This, uh, you know, 1.53438, exact same number here. This, you know, 1.01591, exact same number here. And finally, right, this, 0.931166, exact same number here. So just spot checking a few values, we can see that we're getting the exact same result for both our normal mapping, right? This large chunks of our matrix, uh, or chunks of rows given to each of our processes, and we're getting the exact same numeric result um, with our cyclic striped version, right? So we have some confidence about the functional correctness of our code. So now that we have that confidence, let's increase the size of a matrix and compare the performance. 
So here we'll go ahead and uh, go back into zero baseline.cpp. And what we'll start up by doing is just, you know, commenting out this print, right? We don't want to print out a very large matrix. That wouldn't be very helpful. And then here, we'll go ahead and just change the size of the matrix to something like 1024 by 1024, um, or two to the 10. So we'll quit out of there, and then we'll do the exact same thing with our cyclic mapping, right? So we'll go ahead and do that, and then let's go ahead and change the number of rows inside of our matrix as well to that exact same two to the 10 by two to the 10, right? So large square matrices. And then of course, we have to make sure to recompile our code here. Okay. So now we have both of our piece of code uh, compiled again um, with this larger matrix size as an input. Let's go ahead and run and compare those uh, printouts of, of our execution time. So first what we can do is we'll do npi run dash in and we'll just start with dash in two, right? And we'll run you know first our baseline. And what we see is it takes somewhere on the order of you know, 0 0.39, 0 0.4 seconds. And then we can run our cyclic striped version. And we see we got a decent performance improvement, right? So around 0.04 versus 0.031, right? So again, right, if you were doing a you know, much better study on the performance of this, you'd want to run this multiple times and get more of an average performance. Um, and you especially wouldn't want to run it while you're also uh, recording as well. That will interfere with some of our performance numbers. But you can see that there's a pretty significant difference in performance here, right? Um, even with any noise that's, that's inside of our data. Uh, from there, let's go ahead and up the uh, parallelism here. So we'll go from uh, two processes to four. So we see again, right, an improvement inside of our baseline. So we go from, from 0.4 to about you know, 0.025 or so. And then we see, right, if we do our cyclic stripe version, right, you see we're all the way down to, you know, 0.019 or 0.02, right? So we seem to be consistently better, right, than our baseline version with our cyclic striped version. Now, there may be, uh, you know, cases where our baseline version is actually better than our cyclic striped. Remember, we have these different kinds of communication patterns, which may have different costs. And we might see different effects based on what we're actually running on our computer at any given moment. So let's go ahead and try and run this with, you know, you know eight processes for a baseline. And we see we get, you know, 0.027, right? So it's even worse than our, uh, you know, dash in four case, right? So we're not actually seeing any benefit here. And then if we do kind of a similar thing with our cyclic striped version, right? We see 0.021, right? And that's worse than our dash in four case. So remember, you know, when we're doing things that are going to have communication overheads, right? More threads or more tasks doesn't actually mean or necessarily mean better performance. It depends on what we're running on our system um, and how we've set up our communication, right? Those can be very dominating factors, right? Um, in terms of performance. And like I said, you may get different results on your machine and, you know, with whatever else you're running on your processor. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. That's a uh, brief introduction to this uh, cyclic striped mapping that we can apply to Gaussian elimination. As we can see, we get you know some better performance right at different levels of parallelism. Um, right. In fact, when I was running this without recording at the same time, um, you know, we saw continued improvement in both cases for eight processes for both baseline and cyclic striped. And cyclic striped was still better, right? But that'll be influenced by also having recording going at the same time. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before art, right? So you can find all of this under this parallel CPP repository. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.